In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at building a RESTful API using Node.js and Couchbase. Now you might notice that this is actually the second video I've done on the subject. Uh, the difference between this one and the last one is this one's going to use the ODM called Ottoman, whereas the previous video used nickel queries, which were SQL-like queries for Couchbase and Node.js. Uh, so when it comes to an ODM or an object document mapping, uh, think of, say, I don't know if you have familiarity with MongoDB and Mongoose. So Ottoman accomplishes the same things as Mongoose, but this time we're working with Couchbase instead. Uh, so if you have not seen the previous video that does use Nickel, uh, that's all right. You won't miss anything. Um, you'll be able to follow through with this tutorial perfectly all right. However, I do recommend you watch that video either before or after the nickel video. So that's what I'm referring to uh, because it is very useful and it will teach you a lot when it comes to the various options that you have when building Node.js applications with Couchbase. So like I said, this is going to be Ottoman. You don't need to have seen the previous video, um, but it will be uh, interesting to watch anyways. So with that said, I do have my terminal open on my computer. Uh, there are some prerequisites that you must follow in order to make this tutorial a success. You do need to have Couchbase server installed somewhere. So for me, I have it installed on my local machine, uh, but you can have it installed wherever you want. It could be on Amazon EC2, it could be locally, it could be wherever you want. Uh, you also need to make sure that the Couchbase server version that you have is Couchbase server 4.0 or higher. With that said, let's go ahead and create a new project on our desktop. I'm going to call it Ottoman example, and I'm going to navigate into it. So the first thing that we want to do, because this is a fresh project, we're going to do start to finish is I want to create a new Node.js application. So I can do that by doing npm init hyphen y. And that will create a sample package.json file. So with that package.json file created, let's go ahead and open it up with our editor of choice. So I'm going to use Atom by GitHub. I'm going to say uh, Atom. And it'll open it up. All right. So to open it up, uh, as you can see, there's only one file in it. It's package.json. Uh, it's pretty empty. So what we want to do now is we want to install the various dependencies that this project will use. So I'm going to go ahead and say npm install Couchbase, Express, because we're going to be using Express Framework, Body Parser, so that way we can handle requests with JSON bodies, as well as Ottoman. And I'm going to do hyphen hyphen save. So while this is going, I do want to make it clear that this tutorial, we're not going to be worrying about a front end in this tutorial. It's going to be all back end. Uh, so what that means is we're going to need to be able to test it in a various way. So we're actually going to be using a tool, tool called Postman to do that. We're not going to be using Angular or jQuery or any of that stuff. Uh, so it's this, the focus is strictly on uh, API creation. So with that command done, uh, let's go ahead and look at our uh, package.json file. Uh, it did add the dependencies to the package.json file because we use the hyphen hyphen save. So in the future, if we wanted to reinitialize this project, we would do npm install. So going back to our terminal, we're going to add a few files. And you can create these files however you want. I'm going to create them using my terminal. But I'm going to say I want to create an app.js file. I want to create a models.js file and I want to create a routes.js file. So at this point, uh, we are good to go. I do have Couchbase running, and I have already created a bucket on Couchbase called example. Uh, this is just a standard bucket. Uh, I didn't assign it that much space. Uh, it's just very basic for this example. Uh, we don't need to do any further configuration. We don't need to do any kind of index creation because we're going to do that all through the code. So let's start with the app.js file. This is where we're going to do all of our bootstrapping of our application. Uh, that means that we're going to include all of our downloaded dependencies. We're going to establish a connection to Couchbase server, and we're even going to start up our Node.js server. So let's start by importing those downloaded dependencies.
All right, with those dependencies uh, imported, now we can go ahead and initialize Express.js. So Express is our framework. All right, with Express initialized, now we need to go ahead and set up the body parser so that way we can uh, submit JSON body requests. Perfect. Now, now that we have body parser set up, now we can focus on setting up Couchbase. So what we want to do is first we want to establish a connection to a Couchbase cluster, or in my case, the cluster is just going to be one node on my local computer. With the connection established, now we want to open up a particular bucket. So uh, this application, we're going to have several different types of documents in this application, uh, but they're all going to reside in the same bucket. And again, that bucket is called example. We do want to use this bucket on several uh, different JavaScript files of this Node.js application. So the best thing to do is we want to export it. So we're going to say module.exports.bucket equals bucket. So then we can use it on our routes file and our model, models.js file as well. Now, the next thing we want to do is, because we will be working with API endpoints, those API endpoints will exist in our routes.js file. Uh, we want to include that in our bootstrapping. So we can say var routes equals require and then routes.js and we're going to pass it the initialized express object um, and then and then our routes file is going to be able to use that uh, to establish um, our endpoints. So with that created, uh, we have a few more things to do. Uh, we have to set up Ottoman at this point. So what we want to say is Ottoman. dot bucket equals bucket. So we want Ottoman to be pointing at our open uh, couch base bucket. So Ottoman does a lot of its own things uh, in the background. It's it's the part of the beauty of using Ottoman and that includes setting up indexes or using indexes. Uh, but in, to make sure that we're using the correct indexes, the ones that Ottoman expects, what we want to do is we want to say Ottoman dot ensure indexes. And that's asynchronous. So what we want to do is we want to include error. And if there was an error, we want to console log it out. Otherwise, um, our indexes are now created and we want to start serving our application. So just to make sure that we're serving it, we're going to console.log it. Perfect. Uh, so as of right now, we do have a fully bootstrapped Node.js application. It won't do anything, uh, but everything is really configured and ready to go. Uh, so that will bring us to the next part of our uh, tutorial here is we want to define what routes we'll be using in our application. So what endpoints do we want the browser or client facing application to be able to hit? So in order to do that, uh, we should start by kind of setting up this file. So we can say var app routes equals function. Remember we're passing in the app, the express object. Uh, we also want to say module dot exports equals app routes or let's call it app router perfect uh, so now let's go ahead and, and figure out what routes we want so we can say app dot get this is a get endpoint for person so the expectation is that when we hit this endpoint 
person, it's going to get all documents inside of our database, so all people. And I should probably explain what our goal here is. So our goal here is to be able to add people to our database and add comments to each, peop each person in the database. So in theory, we're gonna have a person it's going to have some information about the person, maybe the name, the email, things like that. It's also going to have an array of comments. But the thing is, these comments are going to be IDs. It's going to be an array of IDs. We're not going to store the comment information inside of the person document. What we're going to do is we're going to refer to other documents, kind of how a relational database does it. Uh, the difference here being that uh, this is schemaless. There's no constraints. Uh, we're using pure NoSQL. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to copy this endpoint. Uh, and our next endpoint is going to be uh, ID. So this time we want to get a particular person document. Um, we have a few more endpoints to do. Uh, so let's, let's copy it again. This time instead of a get, it's going to be a post. So the purpose of this one is we're going to be able to create or update a particular document. Finally, uh, we have one more endpoint. It's going to be another post endpoint. Oops. And this one's going to be comment. Uh, so that way we can create a comment for a person. So we're not going to actually code these, these endpoints yet. What we want to do is we want to establish our models. And this is where Ottoman comes in and really starts to shine. So at this file, we want to say var Ottoman equals require ottoman and again we want to say ottoman dot bucket and we could have easily exported this as well uh, but we're going to say ottoman uh, equals require app dot bucket so pretty much the same thing we saw uh, in the app.js page now we actually have to define our model. So we're going to define two different models in this file. Now, In the future, it's probably good practice to split these into separate files uh, for maintainability, but it's all right for this example. So we're going to say var person model equals ottoman dot model. And we're going to call this person. And everything that comes inside of this object is going to be part of the model. So let's see, for example, for example, we can say timestamp. And the cool thing about this is if you've ever never used an ODM before, you can set default values. You can also define what the values are expected to be for validation purposes. So for the timestamp, we're going to set a default value. So we're going to say type is date and default is going to be a function that returns a new date. Just like that. So uh, we don't have to include a timestamp when we save these documents. It'll be created for us. Otherwise, it'll use whatever, whatever we pass to it. All right, so timestamp is done. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to create a name. So name is going to be an object. It doesn't have to be, but in this case, it will. We're going to say first, it's going to be a string, last string. Uh, we're going to exit out of that, and we're going to say uh, there's going to be an email, which is going to be a string. Next up, we're going to say uh, comments. This is where things get a little, little different. So comments is going to be an array. Uh, oops, I have it backwards. So it's going to be an array uh, of, of objects, uh, but it's actually going to be a reference. So the reference is going to be uh, to a comment model that we've not yet created. We will, uh, but it's not yet there. So it'll be a reference to comment. So let's go ahead and create that comment model. So var comment model equals ottoman dot model comment and this time it'll be a lot a lot shorter than the previous uh, so what we want to do is we want to have again a timestamp it's gonna have a default
and it's also going to have a message, which is going to be a string. And that's all there is to this one. Uh, it's not anything fancy here, um, but it's still kind of complicated, still complex. So next we want to do is we want to export these two. So we're going to say module.exports.person model equals person model and module.exports comment model. Uh, so at this point, uh, our Ottoman models should be done. Um, everything else is going to happen through the Ottoman library. So it's uh, the Ottoman library is really going to take care of a lot of stuff for us. If you if you do if you did watch the previous video that used the nickel queries, uh, you know that I did a whole lot more uh, logic and code inside of our models class. Uh, but in this case, Ottoman, there's really not too much to it. So now let's jump back into routes. We should be able to do everything uh, further in the routes file. So starting with uh, getting all people. So what we can do is we can say, well, before we do that, we actually need to import the two models that we created. So var person model equals require And then var comment model equals require. Perfect. So now what we can do is we can say person model dot find. Uh, and for our find statement, we're going to pass in an empty object. So there are no find parameters. It's going to get every person model document. And it's going to know what is a person model. Uh, because when what Ottoman does is it, it stores its own type references, uh, so it's not going to find comments for us. It's only going to find uh, people. So we're going to say uh, function, error, and then we're going to say people. So if error, we're going to return a response status of error code 400 and we're going to send we're going to send the error itself otherwise it was successful and what we want to do is we want to return uh, people perfect we won't uh, we won't actually well we won't run this yet um, because we don't have any data in there um, but we're going to we're going to create our endpoint now that will actually save our data. So we're going to create that person endpoint and we're going to test them both at the same time. So inside of our post request, we're going to say person model. Oops, not person model. We're actually going to say var person equals new person model. And now we're going to fill in all of those properties that we set inside of our models.js file. All of them that didn't have a default value. So this is coming from a post body, remember. So we're getting the first name, the last name. And we're doing this, uh, we're typing this out manually because you shouldn't trust what your user gives you. You need to sanitize your data and only take in what you expect. So the first name, last name, uh, there should be an email. And that should be it because the timestamp was default. Um, we don't need to have comments in there. It won't error on us if we don't. So what we want to do now is we want to do person.save. And inside of it, we're going to have a callback. So this is how we're saving data. If there was an error, return it. Otherwise, we're going to return uh, the result. All right, so at this point, uh, we should probably be good to start testing. Uh, it's not complete. 
but we can at least start testing it. So open up the terminal. And what we want to do is we want to say uh, node app.js. And so you can see that it's listening on port 3000. The thing about this is that again, we don't have an, uh, we don't have a front end. So instead we have to use, um, we're going to be using postman in this example. So I'll clear my history here so that way it's less confusing. Uh, so we have our endpoint. So we're going to, we're going to start with the get endpoint for person and I'm going to send it. And you can see, uh, that we just received an empty array. There's, there's no data that was returned at this point because there's no data that exists. So let's change that endpoint. Uh, it's going to be a post request now. We go to the body tab. We're going to send some JSON data. So we're going to say we want to send uh, name. And then name is a, an object here. So we're going to say first. Uh, if I recall correctly, we also have an email. And that should actually be it. So if I hit send, it should, shouldn't should error on us, but let's try it. Send, uh, and, and nothing came back, uh, which might be all right. So let's, uh, let's, let's do a get request here. See if it, any, any data is there. Yeah, so the save worked. It just didn't return anything for us because we, we didn't specify really what we wanted it to return, uh, which is fine. So the data is here. Uh, comments is empty, we have an ID, we have the name, timestamp, everything that we expect, which is good. So now let's say uh, we only want to search for this document. Right now we have an array, but fortunately for us, there's only one document in that array because there's only one document in the database. So what we want to do is we want to go back to our code and we want to cover the scenario where there's an ID and we want one document. So what we can say is we can say person model, and there's several ways to do this. This is just, um, this is the easiest way. So get by ID. So this is a baked in function of Ottoman. So the ID that we're gonna pass is the request.params.id. We're also going to pass in uh, a callback. And then if error, you can see a trend here. They're all going to be pretty much the same. Otherwise, we're going to send the person. So let's go ahead and restart our terminal. If you're using a uh, live reload for Node.js, that's fine too. But I'm just going to restart it. And I'm going to open up uh, Postman again. Uh, this time, I'm going to copy the ID and I'm going to add it to the request. So I'm going to do slash and then the ID and hit send. And you can see this time it's not an array, it's one document. Uh, so that's good. We were able to get that one document by the ID. And you remember I said that you can do it multiple ways. Well, if you wanted to, you can add, you could do a find and you can say um, like ID and then the I, whatever was passed. Uh, but that's not a very clean approach to doing it. So we're going to keep it with get by ID. So we do have one more endpoint left. Uh, this endpoint is going to be a little different than anything that we saw so far because it's going to do several different things. Oh, so what we're going to do is we're going to save a comment and then we need to add that comment ID from the saved comment to the person. So that way we can have an array of references. Uh, so there's several parts. First off, what we're going to do is we're going to say comment equals new comment model. Uh, we don't need to enter a timestamp. We only need to enter a message. Perfect. Now we can say comment.save function error result. So if error return response status 400 send error otherwise we need to do a lookup now so our lookup we're going to say person model dot get by id uh, because what we're going to do is we're going to assume that an id was passed with this message so we're going to say uh, 
request.body.id. We're going to say function error result. And we're going to say uh, if error return status 400 send error. So after we get the document by its ID, we need to save the comment information to it. Uh, so what we can do is we can say, uh, and this might make it easier, instead of result, let's, let's maybe call it person. So we're going to say person.save. No, not save, sorry. Uh, save will come, uh, but we're going to say person.comments, because remember, person models have comments. Push, because remember, it's an array. Uh, so we're going to add comment to it. Uh, comment being the comment model. Now we can actually save it. Person.save function error result. And let's go ahead and for, for time, let's go ahead and save, uh, copy and paste that. And we're going to say response.send person. All right. So in theory, uh, this should work. So let's go ahead and check it out. I'm going to restart this and go to Postman. And we're going to add a new comment. So I'm going to copy the person ID because remember, it expects it. And we're going to do a post request. It's going to be against the comment endpoint. And for body, we're going to pass a few things here. We're going to pass an ID. And we're going to pass a message. Let's go ahead and send it. So we did get a response. It looks like the save was successful. So if I go to Couchbase, uh, my Couchbase dashboard, so I'm going to go to Buckets, Example. I do have um, I do have a document in here. It looks like it may not have worked though. Oh, it did actually. I take that back. So there's a person document and a comment document. Uh, so first of all, comment, uh, it has that information in it. It has the type comment, uh, it has timestamp and a message. And if I go back to person, uh, you'll notice it has what we expect in a person doc document, uh, but it's an array of references, remember. So in theory, if I go back to my postman and I type in person, let's say I want to get all people and send it, cannot read Oh, sorry, it's a po I did accidentally did a post request, so it did error. So we don't have any kind of validation going on. Uh, you can easily go on and, and add validation methods to make sure that the appropriate things are happening, uh, but I did not. So we're going to change that to a get request, click send, and it got our information. The thing is, though, that it actually, the comments are null. It doesn't know what to do with the comments at this point. And that's because, by default, it only goes one level deep when you do a find. By one de level deep, I mean if there's any other nested models in there, it will not load them. It'll keep them in reference format, uh, or in this case, null. So what we want to do is we want to go back into our code. We want to go to the find method, and we want to do right after the empty brackets, uh, before the callback, we want to add a comma, and we want to say load, but we want to tell it what we want it to load, and by load, I mean expand. So we want to say that we want to load the comments property. And it should actually be an array. So you can actually load more, more items because you may have more, more than one uh, relationship in there. So let's go ahead and save it and see what this does for us. Oops. So I'm going to send that request again. And you can see this time it actually loaded the information. And as you can expect, if I were to do just for one document, uh, it will fail again. Uh, well, it won't fail. It'll just fail to uh, expand. So it is null again. So if we go back into our editor and we do the same thing, right after the ID, we're going to say load comments.
I'll refresh it and send it again. So it did it did expand it this time. So if if we look back on everything that we did so far, uh, we did our basic bootstrapping of this application. This is uh, Node.js, Express Framework, Couchbase, and Ottoman. So we bootstrapped all of that. Inside of the models, we defined two different Ottoman models. So those models essentially were just what kind of data we're expecting inside of each one of these documents. So two different document types. And Ottoman really takes care of the rest at this point. Uh, so for example, uh, we have uh, a person endpoint. We have a that'll get all documents based on the find. We have a get by an ID kind of endpoint. We have a create person and we have a create comment. So what if we really want to go a bit further on this? Uh, so what we can do actually is what if we want to get by a person ID? So I'm going to not by a person ID, a person email. So I'm going to copy this endpoint. We're going to change it up a bit. We're going to say person uh, find by email. We're just naming it whatever we want. And then the parameter will be email. So there's two ways to do this. What we can uh, one way to do this would be find, like I mentioned earlier, uh, and we'll we'll see both. So in this find, we're going to say email, and then that's request.params.email, uh, and then we're just going to return. Uh, so let, let's go ahead and see what that what that looks like. So in this case, uh, we're changing our get request find by email. And the email will be nick at test.com. Send it. Uh, and you can see that it did find it. It did expand the comments uh, just like that. Uh, you can also change it up a bit uh, if you want. So instead of that, we can say find by uh, email. And in this case, uh, we'll, we'll remove this object. And we'll reload it. And try it again. So send. So it did fail. Uh, so it failed for a specific reason, and we're gonna we're gonna take a look at that. So what we want to do is we're gonna go back into our uh, models. So it failed because we want to add a certain index. Ottoman expects an index to be created if we want to do custom searches like that. We can do find perfectly fine, fine. I mean, uh, but. If, if we're trying to do anything other than get by ID, we need to create an index for it. So we can do that by doing the following. Index, find by email, and then the by is gonna be email, uh, the email property, and then the type is going to be a reference, a reference doc. So in theory, this should work out. So I'll reset it. I'll send it again. And it failed. Um, maybe I had some kind of typo in here. So it didn't fail in the in the sense that it erred, but it didn't find the data that I wanted. Uh, so let's let's take a look. So the problem was for whatever reason, um, type didn't it didn't like the type, so I removed it. Um, inside of the model.js file for our person model. So after I removed it, I kept it as find by email um, and then by email for the email property. It's going to automatically define what type of index should be created uh, when we rerun it next. Um, I also need to change this back. So it could, should be uh, request params dot email. Uh, so if I go back into my terminal and rerun it, and go to my postman, I can say send, uh, and it went ahead and it found it by the email. So there, there are two different ways uh, to, to of course, query uh, data based on certain parameters. You can use find, you could use find by if you've set up an index for it. Uh, it's your preference. Uh, so just to recap, uh, we did create two models. Uh, we defined uh, what we can query on. We defined uh, one particular model that had uh, reference of an array of, of comment references. And then routes used Ottoman's magic uh, to be able to query and create data in various ways. So again, if you compare this against uh, what we did in the previous video tutorial, 
uh, you may or may not uh, find preference in this. So it's it's I like to think of it as preference. I use both Ottoman and Nickel uh, when I'm working with Node.js applications. Um, so it's it's more of a preference on what what you feel more most comfortable with. Both ways work fine. 